Listen, a farmer went out to plant some seed. As he scattered it across his field, some of the seed fell on a footpath and the birds came and ate it. Other seed fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. The seed sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow, but the plant soon wilted under the hot sun and since it didn't have deep roots, it died. Other seed fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants, so they produced no grain. Still other seeds fell on fertile soil, and they sprouted and grew and produced a crop that was thirty, sixty and even a hundred times as much as had been planted. Today as we carry on with our series, Check Your Soil, I want to tell you a story. In fact, it's a story that I've heard maybe a hundred times in my years of ministry. Maybe it's a story that you've also heard before. It goes something like this. Someone meets Jesus and they become a Christian. And like in a moment, everything about their life changes. In a moment, they become like radical and on fire for God. And, and they stop like all their lifestyle habits. Like in a moment, they stop swearing and drinking, maybe even give up smoking. They get baptized and committed to church. And, and, and they get into a circle group and they go on a mission and they get involved in a serving area. And so you see this radical change. All their friends notice it because their friends, they, 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 they now don't want to do the same old things they used to do with their friends. And so all their friends are complaining. And, and suddenly this person like posts everything on Facebook. Like their Facebook timeline is just scriptures and, and opinions on ministry and, and churches. In fact, they get so Christian that people start getting irritated with them. Like they're one of those people, they're just so on fire for God. Right? Maybe you've seen people change like that in a moment, but perhaps this story sounds familiar because the story's not done yet. See, what often, what, what often happens in these times is that there's a little bit of trial introduced into this person's life. I don't know, maybe they lose something. They, they lose a job, or they lose a friend, or they lose a loved one. Or they get persecuted for being so on fire for Jesus. And suddenly, when there's a little bit of heat, a little bit of fire, a little bit of trial, this person starts to reconsider their position. And they start to back out of the faith. Suddenly, they start to be riddled with doubt and confusion, and the trial makes them question God and His goodness. And so suddenly, they start to just go back to their old friends and their old ways, and you hear stories about them now. They're partying again. They're back with those friends again. And when you talk to them, what do they say to you? Man, I, I gave Christianity a shot. I tried religion. Didn't work for me. I tried that church thing. Didn't work out. I, I tried that Christian thing. But I don't know. My life didn't get any better, and so I'm going to try something else now. Ever heard a story like that? Maybe you know of someone who's gone through that kind of journey, and I want to tell you that journey, that story, is as old as time. In fact, Jesus even teaches a parable into people who have that kind of experience with him. The parable of the sower that we're studying now in this series, Check Your Soil. Today you're finding us in week two, and we've already discovered something. The Bible refers to us as soil, look at someone and say, you're soil. <clears throat> and there are farmers in your life. That's anyone who comes to you with the Word of God. Right now I'm being a farmer. And the farmers come and they plant seed, which is the Word of God, into your soil. Right? Now, what we learn in this parable is that if our soil is bad, we won't grow. You won't grow spiritually. But if your soil is good, if it's fertile, man, not only will you grow, but you're going to reproduce a harvest 30 or 60 or 100 times more than you ever got. Wow! Depends on the condition of your soil, and you get to choose which kind of ground you are. Last week, there was a warning that we could become hard. 
that there could be footpaths in our garden that make us hard to receive the seed. But perhaps that's not the condition of your soil today. Maybe your soil isn't hard. Maybe your soil falls into the second category. It's shallow. Perhaps your soil isn't hard. Maybe your soil is shallow. This is what we read in the book of Mark where Jesus teaches on this parable in Mark chapter 4. For verse 5, it says, Other seed fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. The seed sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow. But the plant soon wilted under the hot sun. And since it didn't have deep roots, it died. Sound familiar? Jesus explains later on what he means in verse 16. He says, The seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. I want to ask you today, how's your soil? How's your soil? Is it moist and full of goodness? Is it ready to receive the seed? Is it soft or is your seed hard and resistant to the word? Or perhaps, like Jesus is teaching here, is your soil Shallow. Look at someone and say, check your soil. It's so important we check our soil because unless we check our soil, we will not grow. Now what I find so fascinating when I read this parable is that we get a glimpse of how scared the enemy is of the Bible. We get a glimpse of how scared scared he is of the seed. How scared he is of you receiving seed. In fact, when he sees someone walking up to you and about to scatter seed, you know what the, 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 the devil does? He, he wants to come and steal your seed, and if it starts to grow, he wants to kill your seed. The devil is so scared of what you might do with the seed because he knows this is an incorruptible seed, and if your soil is good and you receive it, you're going to be fruitful. He knows that this is an incorruptible seed, and so if you believe it, you're going to get healed, and you're going to get delivered, and you're going to get made whole. And worse than that, what if other people around you see what the seed did in your life, and they start to also receive and obey the Word of God? Then the devil's going to have a problem on his hands. And so what does he do? When he sees someone coming to you with seed, man, he gets out all guns a-blazing. He knows he has to steal the seed or kill the seed if it starts to grow. That's what he does. He knows the potential and power of the seed in your garden. Listen, that's why when someone comes to sow seed in your life, the seed is going to bring with it spiritual opposition. It's going to bring spiritual opposition. That's not on you. That's just what the Word does. You're you're going to notice when you're serious about growing and receiving seed, how the spiritual opposition increases in your life. Suddenly, you have a thousand reasons to get distracted. Some of you even experienced it this morning on your way to church. The devil is going to throw everything he can at you to make sure that you don't grow. Because if the word gets in you, your life will be fruitful. And he doesn't want that. And so it's entirely up to us what we let him do, and it's entirely up to us what kind of soil we are, what kind of ground we are. So I want to ask you, perhaps perhaps you're not hard, but maybe you're experiencing a shallowness in your faith. There's a warning for all of us as soil, for all of us as different gardens, that we mustn't be shallow. Jesus teaches us that if we are shallow, We might experience a little bit of spiritual growth for a while, but when the sun comes, when the heat comes, our faith will die. That growth will die. This is really what Jesus is saying. If you want to see how deep someone is in their walk with God, put a little bit of trial in their life and see what they do. If you want to see how deep someone is with God, put a little of heat, put a, inject a little bit of trial into their lives and see if they lost through the heat or if their faith dies. Because it's only if we are deep with God that we can grow through the trial. You see, the devil, he's going to inject persecution 
and trial and pressure and temptation and hardship. He's going to inject that if he sees the seed growing in your life. He's going to turn up the heat in your life because he doesn't want you to grow. He's going to turn up the heat in your life. Why? Because he's trying to kill the seed. He's trying to kill whatever God has started in you. And I've seen this so many times in my own life. And I've seen this in the lives of others that I've interacted with. Right, like maybe people that I'm counseling or people that I'm ministering to on Sundays or in my circle group, sometimes you can see they have a light bulb moment. What did Oprah say? Like an aha moment, right? Not that I watched it, I heard about that. <laughs> but but the, 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 these people that receive the word and it's like a light bulb goes on and in the moment they're like, oh my word, I can see what I need to do and I can see what God's saying and I can see it so clearly and I'm so excited about the word of God, I'm receiving the seed. And then you see them the very next week and you're like, oh, how did it go with that thing that we spoke about last week? And they look at you confused and they're like, oh yeah, I said that. Well, you, you'll never believe what happened when I left. Man, I just got this phone call with this terrible news. Man, you'll never believe what happened that week. My wife and I just started fighting, man. We were just at each other's throats the whole week. Oh, you'll never believe what happened when I left, man. The business pressure just got insane. I've been working to death this week. Oh, man, you never believe what happened. I, I, I pranked someone's car, and I've just been fighting with insurance all the week. It's been a terrible week. Haven't done a thing. Why does that happen? Oh, because the devil was scared of that seed. And he knew... That if he didn't turn up the heat, those roots could go deep and you could grow and become fruitful in the place he doesn't want you to be fruitful. And so you've got to know when you receive the seed, there is going to be some heat in your life because the devil wants to kill it. Every time, church, this is what Jesus says, every single time when you receive the seed, there will be heat. It's not on you. That's just what the word brings. So how is your soil because I pray that we will not be shallow Christians. I pray that we will not be shallow in our gardens because this is what Jesus teaches. If we are shallow in our gardens, we will always desire to quit. In fact, this is going to be the first sign of shallow soil is the desire to give up. It's a sign for you that there's some shallow soil in your faith. Are you, are you wanting to give up? To give up on God, to give up on church, to give up on Christians, to give up on your circle, to give up on your serving. I don't know. Where is it you are maybe tempted to give up? Because it's too hard. Well, that's a sign that there's perhaps some shallow soil in your faith at the moment. That's the objective of the devil. He wants to get you to give up. He wants to get you to quit. He wants to get you to walk away. And I, I can't tell you how many times I've seen people in the moment of heat, they give up on God instead of pressing into God. They're having a bad day. And what do they say? Oh, man, I, I'm just not in the mood to pray today. Woo! Man, they're going through a bad season. Instead of pressing into God, what do they do? Man, uh, what's the point? What's the point of going to church? What's the point of spending time in the Word? What's the point of reading the Bible? What's the point of... What's the point? What's the point? And so they just stop. <laughs> it's a sign of shallow soil. When, when you're going through the hardship, when you're going through the heat, when the devil is turning up the temperature in your life, that is the time to dig in. That's not the time to give up. That's the time to say, I need to increase my prayer. I need to increase my worship. I need to increase my conversation, my intimacy with God. I need these roots to go deep because if these roots don't go deep, I'm not going to survive this. Perhaps some of you, the heat's been turned up in your life and, and you've just kind of been a little bit inconsistent in your walk with God and I don't, you, you're not sure if you can continue I want to tell you, when the heat is on in your life, dig deep, don't give up. Dig deep, dig deep, don't give up. You've got to press into the presence of God, press into the Word of God, press into intimacy, press into prayer. That's the only way you're going to survive the heat is if your roots are deep. Look at someone and say, dig deep. Look at someone else, your second choice, and say, don't give up. We can't give up, church. 
In fact, Galatians 6 verse 9, this is a verse that should be tattooed on your heart and memorized in your soul and underlined in your Bible. I hope it is. It says this, so let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. 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 Push through. Persevere. It's really interesting to see how a shallow soiled Christian works. Because Jesus teaches us that they're going to receive the seed quite gladly. They're going to receive the seed enthusiastically, and there's going to be quick change, right? They're going to grow very quickly. But the problem isn't on the surface. The problem is deep under the soil. When the heat gets turned on, when the enemy brings persecution, the reason they die is because their roots are not deep enough. You know what that shows us? It's quite easy to look like a Christian, without being one. It's easy to look like it on the surface. It's easy to be more concerned about our reputation than we are about our character. Listen, don't ever be more concerned about your reputation than you are about your character. It is a sign of shallow faith. What God really wants to do inside of us is a change under the surface where no one sees it is easy for this word to change our behavior without it ever changing our heart. And as human beings, we know how to act the part and we know how to fit in. I mean, you know, you come to church, you, you, maybe you're new to this or, or you've, gone to, you've come from other churches or you've never been to church before. You come into a building like this and you go, oh, okay, is this how you do it? Okay, so when I'm here... I shouldn't swear. Okay. Okay. Okay, so when I'm here, I probably shouldn't be drunk. That's different. Okay, I'm going to try that. Okay. Oh, so when I'm here, I need to say, hello, brother. Okay, cool. And I need to say, amen, sister. And I need to cheer like Monica every time someone says something good. Hey. And, oh, okay. I need to clap when there's a good point. Right, I... When I'm here, oh, I see, I, I should worship with my hands up and, and memorize a verse or two. Okay, hallelujah, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. Look at me. Don't I look like a Christian, brother? Hey, oh, no, I'm too blessed to be stressed. And you? <laughs> and so we, we, we learn how to adapt to our circumstance and change the surface but God isn't interested in changing the surface. He's not interested in you looking like a Christian. He's interested in you being one. He's not interested in you looking like a child of God. He's interested in you feeling like a child of God, that it changes you on the inside. The deepest part of you changes, that the seed of God's Word penetrates you on the inside. On the inside. Jesus said in Matthew 23, 27, hypocrites, for you you're all like whitewashed tombs, beautiful on the outside, but filled on the inside with dead people's bones and all sorts of impurity. Listen, that is what shallow soil looks like. This is a second sign that there's shallow soil in our lives. It's hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. Can I just say, hypocrisy is very hard to spot in the mirror. It's very hard to see in yourself. Very few of us, if I ask, how many of you are hypocrites? You're going to be like, me. It's very hard to see in ourselves. So let me give you a test. Yeah, here's your test. And if this is true of you, perhaps it's some shallow soil. What do you change about your speech or behavior when you're in a room full of Christians that you don't do when you're in a room with the world? What do you edit about yourself to fit in to a room like this? What do you change? Because if you need to edit anything or pretend in any way, perhaps there's some shallow soil and the Word of God hasn't truly penetrated deep in you and you're using a, sh a shallow layer 
of faith to cover the rocks of sin lying in your garden. You come to church, man, all your words are like Christianese, sanctified by the blood of the Lamb, right? You go home and you swear so much your kids' ears bleed. But not here, right? Not here. Here we speak proper. Right, I mean, here your, your wife and you look like you're doing amazing. But you've been talking all week about divorcing. What do you change about your behavior or your speech in order to fit into a church setting? Because when there's pretense in your life, it's a sign of hypocrisy, which is a sign of shallow soil. You see, the deeper the seed of God's Word goes into your life, the deeper He changes you, the less you have to pretend. Because the more you live genuinely like Christ, and so perhaps... Perhaps there's some shallow soil in your life because God, He's not really interested in how you're acting and how you're looking. He's really interested in what's happening below the soil. And believe me, He can see it. God says this in 1 Samuel 16, 7, But the Lord said to Samuel, Don't judge by his appearance or height, for I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see the things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but what the Lord looks at, is he hot? See, all we can see is the outside. We can all see you're in church. That's a good sign of spiritual growth, but we have no clue what's happening beneath the soil. How deep are you with God? How deep are you with God? We can't tell, but God can tell. And he knows that unless the roots go deep, you're not going to survive the heat. Your faith won't survive it. What are the things that God wants to change? What are the deep things that God wants to change in your heart? Well, the first thing He wants to change is your motives. Your motives. In other words, the reason you do what you do. The reason you sing. The reason you worship. The reason you're nice to people. He cares about the reason. Are you doing it to look good and act good? Or do you worship God? Because He deserves worship. In fact, if you're doing it on the outside, but inside you're not really worshiping, Jesus calls that kind of worship a farce. He says in Matthew 15, 8 to 9, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship is a farce. Wow, that's a sign of shallow soil, shallow Christianity. Listen, if you are genuinely worshiping God, it should never matter what this band sounds like, Right? whether the guitar is out of tune and the lead singer won the wooden idol mic. It shouldn't matter. Because God deserves worship regardless of who's worshiping and what it sounds like. And when the seed of the Word has penetrated your motives, man, then the reason you're doing everything is genuine. Perhaps there's some motives in your life that God hasn't yet changed. Maybe you're a bit shallow in your motives. The seed of God's Word also wants to change your desires. He wants to change your desires. You see, it's so easy to act like we desire God, but then go from Monday to Saturday not living like we truly desire Him. It's so easy to say, God, I desire you to sing the songs. You are my desire. This is my desire. But then from Monday to Saturday, you don't desire time with Him. You don't desire His Word. You don't desire intimacy with Him. You don't desire friendship with Him. You don't desire to speak to Him. It's a sign of shallow Christianity. The seed of God's Word wants to go deep. He wants to transform your character. This is the things that you think and the things that you speak. It's out of the abundance of the heart that you speak. He wants to make your character more like Christ. The decisions you make in the dark that no one knows about. The person you are when you're alone. The seed of God's Word, it doesn't just want to be surface level. It's not just about what we can see. It's about what's happening deep down inside. And so how is your soil? How is your soil? Can you spot any areas where perhaps it's a little bit shallow, where perhaps you're tempted to give up or you're living in hypocrisy? Because what I want to tell you is that the seed, it's This is good seed. 
It's alive. Look at someone and say, it's alive. Look at someone else and say, it's powerful. This is what it tells us in Hebrews 4.12, for the Word of God is alive and it's powerful. Listen, if you come to this Word and your heart is ready to receive, you will grow. The seed will penetrate your motives and desires. It will transform your character if you are ready to receive it. If you allow it to go that deep into you, it will change you. It is the only words in the world that is alive and powerful. And it will penetrate the deepest parts of you if you let it. Maybe you can spot a bit of shallow faith. Perhaps today's a day to say, God, I need to go deeper with you. I'm not okay with just pretending. I want the real thing. I don't want to just talk about you, God. I want to know you deeply and intimately, not just for 85 minutes on a Sunday morning, but I want to know you every day, all day. I want to walk with you, God. I'm ready for the deeper things, the deeper things. In fact, a few weeks ago at conference, Joseph, he shared the scriptures from 2 Peter, which I thought was so appropriate for today. It's 2 Peter 1.5. It talks about the things we need to add to our faith. And it just reminds me, this garden that we are, the soil that we are, it needs good nutrition inside of it in order for our roots to go deep. It, just like soil needs help, it needs nutrients and, and fertilizers. Sometimes we need to add to our faith because just faith alone is not enough. So what do we need to add to our garden in order for these roots to grow deeper? Second Peter one five says, in view of all of this, Make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence and moral excellence with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with patient endurance, patient endurance with godliness, godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love for everyone. The more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But those who fail to develop in this way are short-sighted or blind, forgetting that they've been cleansed from their old sins. Peter reminds us, faith alone is not enough. It's just the beginning. If you just have faith in Jesus and that's where your journey with Him ends, you're going to be shallow. You need to add to your faith Moral excellence. There's these seven ingredients. The first is moral excellence. In fact, where perhaps does the seed of God's Word need to penetrate your morals? Where, where do you know that you are not morally honor, honoring God? It's, he wants more than just an, an okay standard of morals. He wants moral excellence. You, you have not been saved because of your good works, but you have been saved for good works to become more like Christ, to grow in morals. It says, add to your moral excellence knowledge. Perhaps some of you have stopped growing in your knowledge of God. And you know that the next step in your garden, if you're going to get deep with God, you need to grow in your knowledge of Him. We are passionate here at New Life about discipling you and giving you as many platforms as we can for you to grow in your knowledge. In fact, in 2020, we have these three different programs. We want to equip you for life and equip you for family and equip you for faith to help you grow in your knowledge. I want to challenge those of you who know that knowledge is a place where you are lacking. The theology and study of God's Word is a place that you're lacking. Don't neglect the knowledge. In fact, today we've given you pamphlets where you can already go book your slots online for 2020 and you can plan next year's calendar around your pursuit of knowledge. You can plan next year's calendar around your spiritual growth and say, I'm going to make this a priority. I'm going to book it now. And then the rest of the calendar has to fall in line. Well, you do that if you know that you are lacking in your knowledge of the Word of God. Add to your knowledge self-control. What's controlling you at the moment? What habit or addiction or thought is controlling you? If we're going to go deep with God, we need to add self-control. We need to add patient endurance. Perhaps you're enduring something, but just not patiently. 
Maybe God is saying to you, hey, you need to endure this patiently. It's good for your garden. It's going to be entrusted. You go deep with me. Add to patient endurance godliness. This speaks to godly character. Where are the things you need to grow in your godliness? And then finally, brotherly affection and love. Who are the people you are refusing to love that you've written off in your life? Man, if you want to get deep with God, you've got to embrace brotherly affection and love. Have the roots of the word penetrated your motives and your desires and your character. Perhaps God wants you to add some ingredients to your faith because faith alone is not enough. I want to remind you today, shallow Christianity will wreck you. You will not last long. You will give up, and the enemy will win in your life. And people might be celebrating some of the fruit they're seeing right now, but you know, man, when that fire gets turned up, I'm out of here. I'm not going to last. I am crippled inside with hypocrisy and this desire to give up. And so I want to encourage you today, will you go deep? Will you go deeper with God? We, we as a church... Man, every one of us need to be committed to going deeper because otherwise we're not going to survive the heat because the enemy, he's going to test that seed to what he does for every one of us. And so can I ask you to close your eyes as we close this service today? Maybe you've spotted some shallow faith. You can see the places in your life where you are wanting to give up. Call it quits and walk away. Or perhaps you've had been courageous enough to spot some hypocrisy in your life. And you're saying, oh, Jesus, I'm shallow. And this part of my faith, I've become shallow. There's rocks here, God, that I haven't let the seed of the word penetrate. So I want you to pray. Will you pray for Jesus to come? Give him permission. Give the seed permission to change your motives. Change your desires. Penetrate your character. Maybe you're in the heat right now and you've been tempted to give up and you've, you've found yourself inconsistent in your faith. You've hardly been coming to church or you've hardly been reading the Word. You've hardly been praying. And you know that in the heat, the only way you're going to survive it is to press in. Maybe that's the commitment you want to make to God. Say, God, I'm going to press in my roots. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to dig in. I'm going to go deeper with you. So God, I want to pray for everyone who's identified some shallowness in their faith. Thank you, Jesus, for your teaching that you, you could highlight this for us because you know it's so dangerous for us. God, I pray that we would not... We would not allow any shallowness in our faith at all. That we, we wouldn't allow any pretense at all. God, that we would get deeper with you, that you would transform our motives, transform our desires, transform our character, God, so that we can be more like you. And that the seed that people see, the fruit that people see in our lives can be a reflection of what's actually happening under the surface. So right now, I want to speak against any desire to give up, I call it down in the name of Jesus Christ. I come against any hypocrisy. I, I speak against it in the name of Jesus Christ. God, I want to pray that you would rise up in this church, people who are deep in their walk with you, who can withstand the trials, who can withstand the fire, people who grow God and grow even when our seed is tested. Thank you, Jesus, that you want to help us, that you want to grow us, and that you want our gardens to be fruitful. And God, that is our desire, that our soil would be good and healthy, not hard and not shallow. And we claim that now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.